Hi, I'm Teresa Lee from Sumner Elementary, and we are taking a look at the first grade solids and liquids kit. This screencast will give you some more information about lessons one through five in the solids and liquids kit. The big takeaway for lessons one to five is that some properties of solids can be identified by careful observation with the senses alone. This cluster of lessons focuses on identifying and sorting solids using your senses. Students will be using the same set of 20 solids for lessons two through five. But don't worry because they can all fit into a quart sized zip bag. Take a few moments to check out some of the organizational tips that will help you to maintain order in your classroom. One of the first things that I like to do is organize the objects in zip bags so that it's easier to distribute them and it's also easier to clean them up. Make sure that you number or code each bag somehow and have groups work with the same set each time they're doing an activity. When you have partners, one partner picks up materials and the other partner returns the materials. My big one is keeping a lost and found for solid. So it's like a little, just a little container next to the, the Ziploc bags. And if anybody finds anything, they put it in the lost and found and students are to check there if they are missing an item. And the other tip that I like to tell teachers is that I like to use the plastic trays that are already in the kit to corral objects like balls that are gonna roll off of their desks. If you have a standard desk, you can use um, the pencil tray, if you have that runner on your desk, but if not, just use the plastic trays. They're right there and they're there for you to use. That brings us to lesson one. Lesson one is comparing the spool and ball, and this will serve as your pre-assessment for the unit. I like to give students about 10 minutes to work with their partners on coming up with some ideas to compare the spoon and ball, and then I move to a whole group discussion where we generate answers that we chart. The only thing I can tell you is try not to laugh when somebody breaks the plastic spoon. It's, um, it's very shocking to them when somebody does it and somebody does it almost every year. I can't even think of a time when somebody didn't break the blue plastic spoon, but um, just kind of move right past it and everything will be fine. Lesson two, ask students to sort solids based on either their color or their shape. So you have students, if one group of students is working on color, then they might have a red group and a blue group and a clear group. Sometimes they group clear and white together and other groups are working on the shape. Is it round? Is it square? And then after they've done one of those types of sorting, then you just have them reverse and do the other. So by the end of the lesson, all students should have sorted these solids, once based on color and once based on shape. Uh, throughout this unit, make sure that you are checking students' workspace and the floor around them in case anything falls, because it does fall in the excitement of doing this type of work and just try to keep everything in those zip bags. Oops, sorry. These are the Black Line Masters that are in Lesson 3, and you might want to copy those to be able to have a set of them. I usually color them in, cut them out, and laminate them, and then I have a set of them in my teacher's guide, and I'm able to use them when I'm having discussions with students. So um, the other thing is if you had some sort of a board that you work with, you could attach either Velcro or magnets to the back of the... Um, 20 objects. Lesson three, ask students to sort the solids based on whether they roll or stack. This is a good opportunity for students to write and draw about their findings. So these are some of the questions that I would discuss with them prior to sending them off to do their drawing and writing. A Venn diagram is provided in this lesson for students to complete. Uh, some students might find that challenging depending upon what point at first grade you're in in the school year. So 
if there is a problem with filling out a Venn diagram, I like to suggest starting with a T chart because you can use the T chart to populate the Venn diagram. Um, you could also allow students to use those, um, the black line master cutouts that I showed you in the previous slide to do a picture sort if they have a challenge with either writing or language. Lesson four, we're gonna get things rolling with our solids and students are going to observe how and why solids slide and roll. They will construct a simple ramp with textbooks and rulers provided in the kit. So the textbooks are from your classroom and the rulers are from the kit. They will also blow through a straw and attempt to get so solids to slide on a level surface. Lots of questions emerge about the slope as a contributing factor to how far or how fast a solid will slide. So usually you have those two different, some things go move further and some things move faster. So what's the difference? That, that ends up being a really good source of discussion and conversation in your classroom too. Um, if you find that students are expressing a lot of interest in that, you might want to leave uh, one set of materials set up in your science center for independent exploration. Lesson five is a lesson that some teachers choose to skip. I can understand why you might want to skip this one given the time constraints in your schedule. Um, however, in terms of science, the concept of hardness is a really important stu student concept to understand. Um, it's also difficult for a lot of students to attach vocabulary to hardness and they might, they might intermix words that talk about hardness and words that talk about texture. So you could get all sorts of things like hard, fluffy, soft, smooth, rough, um, and you also want to try to clarify that with so that to make sure that they're being as accurate as they can be in their um, explanation. So this is another really good opportunity for students to discuss why they put something in the order that they did in terms of his hardness and, and to be able to use that vocabulary of hard and soft as well. Um, in terms of setting up this lesson, I find that it's helpful to kind of define an area for the students. So you can use either masking tape or adding, like adding machine tape to do that and just label one end soft and one end hard and then they put them in order much like the picture that you see in the slide. So this is the an activity where I probably give them about 10 to 15 minutes to work together with their partner and then we do a, a whole group share out and we take a look at different different groups and where the discrepancies are and have them try to defend why they think their solid belongs where it is in order. So congratulations, you have made it through the first five lessons of solids and liquids. The next series of lessons will focus on learning about properties of matter by conducting simple tests. Until next time.